A 30 year old woman has faced edema. <clears throat> Again, anytime you hear of edema, four important organs come to mind. They are the heart, the liver, the kidney, and then the GIT. The heart, the liver, the kidney, and then the GIT. That's malabsorption. These are the four uh, major organs that when there is a problem, it can lead to what? Edema formation. Edema formation. So now let's look at what organ they are talking about. There's an examination revealed proteinuria, hypoproteinemia, dysproteinemia, hyperlipidemia. What condition are we talking about? I don't know whether it was here, but someone asked the difference between nephritic syndrome and nephrotic syndrome. And this one here is nephrotic syndrome because there's a triad for nephrotic. These are proteinuria, hypoproteinemia, or hypoalbuminemia, and then edema or swelling. This is the three main triad or the triad for diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome. In nephritic syndrome, we have hypertension. Hypertension. We have oligorrhea. 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 And then uh, we have hematorrhea. 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 So this is also a triad for nephritic syndrome. But over here, we are talking about what? Nephrotic syndrome. So you are going for what? C. Okay. A patient with nephrotic, so we really told you it's a kidney problem. And it's having what? A edema of his face and limbs. What is the leading mechanism of the edema development? The last time, Dr. Lucy made us go deeper into the formation of what? Edema. Into the formation of what? Edema. And, when we, and we said, when there is low oncotic pressure, it can lead to what? Edema. Low oncotic pressure can lead to edema. High hydrostatic pressure can lead to what? Edema. And then what? Uh, increase in vascular permeability can also lead to what? Edema formation. Edema formation. But over here, since we are dealing with proteins, because you know it's a nephrotic syndrome. So definitely in nephrotic syndrome, there's what? Proteinuria. And there is hypoalbuminemia. Hypoalbumin. Low albumin levels. That means that the oncotic pressure would what? will be low. So over here, we are thinking of what? A drop of blood, sorry, a drop of oncotic blood pressure. Drop of oncotic blood pressure. A patient staying, if you are moving too fast, just know that it's because we have already solved most of them. We have already dived deep into most of them. So again, if you've not watched the video, do well to watch them. Do well to watch them. All right. Now, a patient staying in the pulmonological department was diagnosed with pulmonary emphysema accompanied with reduced elasticity. Reduced elasticity. That means inability of the heart to recoil, sorry, of the lung to recoil in expiratory what? Uh, volume in the in the lungs. So if it doesn't recoil, that means fluid cannot what? Sorry, that means air cannot what? Flow out. Or expiration will become what? Quite difficult. Quite difficult. Because the elasticity is reduced. So it cannot quell. So if it can quell, what will happen? It means that when uh, volume of air enters, they cannot come out. So when they enter, their lungs becomes what? Hyperinflated. Or it becomes what? Inflated. It becomes what? Inflated. It becomes big. All right? Great. So over here, when such an happen, what can we observe? We can observe that breathing out is difficult. Breathing out will be difficult. You can breathe in, but breathing out would be quite difficult. So over here, we are thinking of what? Expiratory dyspnea. Dyspnea simply means difficulty in breathing. 
expiratory dyspnea. And don't forget, emphysema is a progressive what? Disease of the lungs that causes shortness of breath due to overinflation infla- inf- uh, of the alveoli. I repeat, it's a progressive disease that leads to shortness of breath due to overinflation of the alveoli. Overinflation of the alveoli. And why would the alveoli be overinflated? Because there's a reduced elasticity. There is a reduced elasticity. So here, you are thinking of B. An unconscious young man with signs of morphine poisoning enter an admission office. His respiration is shallow and infrequent, caused by inhibition of respiratory centers. Inhibition of respiratory centers. You know, before you can ventilate or before you can uh, undergo the process of respiration, it is controlled by some nuclei in the uh, medulla, in the medulla obligata. So when these uh, respiratory centers are impeded, it can lead to disturbed in what? In respiration. Or it can lead to abnormal respiration. Abnormal respiration. So over here, we are looking for what? A ventilative dysregulatory. That means they have been inhibited or the regression is impeded. The regression of the, uh, 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 the centers for respiration are impeded or they are inhibited. So we are talking about what? Ventilative dysregulation due to the morphine intoxication. Due to the morphine intoxication. So over here, we are thinking of what? Of E. When we talk about obstruction, we are actually referring to what? Uh, something that is blocking air from moving out. Example, asthma. Example is asthma or bronchitis. These are obstructive diseases. They block the airway. So ventilating becomes quite what? Difficult. So take note. If they have brought asthma or bronchitis, you could be thinking of what? Obstructive ventilation. Obstructive ventilation. And in restrictive ventilation, example include uh, fibrosis of the, of the lung or pulmonary fibrosis where there's scarring in the lungs. It will lead to what? Restrictive. It will lead to what? Restrictive. Restrictive. Just like in the case of emphysema, whereby there's reduced elasticity. So that means what? It cannot require to push uh, air out. And that is also what? A type of respiratory failure. So please, now you know the different kinds of uh, ventilation disorders or respiratory disorders. So this one, it has to do with what? The respiratory centers. So we deal with what? Dysregulation. Dysregulation. All right. A 62-year-old patient who previously worked as a stalker or stoker was admitted to a hospital with complaints of general weakness, apparatus weight loss, hoarse voice, dyspnea, and dry cough. Laryn- Goscopy revealed a tumor of the larynx, a tumor of the larynx that invaded the vocal cords and the epiglottis. What is the cause of the tumor? What is the cause of the tumor? Don't forget the occupation of this 62-year-old man. And he's 62 years. That means that whatever his work is, he could have, or he might have done it for a very long time. So it could be what? A chronic uh, thing. Okay? So he's a what? A stoker. And by virtue of that, uh, they are more like d- dealing with coal. C-O-A-L. Coal. Dealing with coal. And these coals contain some uh, aromatic substances. Aromatic substances or organic matters. So there's the position of all of these, what, uh, let me say, product, just like in fire, when a fire is burning, you see there are some smoke that comes out of it. These smoke are toxic to the lungs. They are toxic to the lungs. So again, you could be thinking of what, something like an organic what, compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen. And these could be what toxic. 
they could be toxic to the lungs. So therefore, we are talking about what? Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or carbohydrate. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Some of these gases, main, mainly they contain what? Uh, hydrogen and carbon atoms. Hydrogen and carbon atoms. So therefore, we can go in for what? Aromatic carbohydrate or hy aromatic hydrocarbons. 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 Which is leading to the development of the tumor. Development of the tumor. So your answer should be E. E. We have a tuberculin was injected. You know of tuberculin even before we go on. You know a tuberculin is type what? Yes, type 4, if I'm correct. Type 4, hypersensitivity what? Reaction. Type 4, hypersensitivity what? Reaction. So if it is type 4, of course, it's an hypersensitivity re reaction, which can be same as what? I, now, you can't see the same as allergic reaction, but when they say, sometimes when they say allergic reaction, they're actually referring to what? Hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity. However, let's look at what is happening in this patient. They said tuberculin was injected intraperitoneally to the animal sensibilized with tuberculin. Okay. Now, venous hyperemia and peritoneal edema were detected on laparotomy 24 hours. Look at this. These are taking place within what? 24 hours. 24 hours. So what can you be thinking about? Of course, you might think this is type 4. However, when this patient was undergoing through that uh, sensibilization, what happened? He reacted within 24 hours. And this is what? Immediate. This is happening what? Immediately. And what's happening immediately with the scarset, that means we are dealing with what? We are dealing with atopic, allergic, anaphylaxis, or ranging type of what? Hyper sensitivity, hypersensitivity. So over here, what comes to mind? We are dealing with allergic inflammation, allergic inflammation, allergic. And of course, there's increased amount of lymphocytes and in the monocytes. All of these things are coming to play. So again, we are dealing with what? allergic reaction, allergic reaction, allergic reaction. All right. <clears throat> We have Daltonism was diagnosed in a seven-year-old boy with prophylactic medical examination. Look at this. Parents, I love it when they give us questions relating to hereditary because it's easy to get the answer correct. Look at it. Parents are healthy. So even if the child is having, that means that we are thinking of the parent having what? A, a recessive gene. The parents are having a recessive because they are healthy. So how can you be healthy and your child be having it? That means you are, you are a carrier. You are what, a carrier. So that means what, a recessive what, gene. Recessive gene. And again, this is a boy. But let's continue. Color vision is normal. Now, grandfather from the mother has the same disorder. The grandfather, that means grandfather will have what? X, Y. Governor have what? X, Y. Governor have X, Y. So let's say this is prime. So that means this is the grandfather's what? Gene. Or the genotype of the grandfather. Because the grandfather is having what? The disease. Now the mother, that's from the mother's side. That means the mother could be what? X prime. I mean a carrier. This is the mother. It's a carrier. So what type of hereditary are we referring to? Of course, we're referring to what? A recessive gene, first of all, and then found on the what? The X chromosome. Found on the X chromosome. So here we are talking about what? A recessive sex linked. Sex linked. And to be specific, it is X linked. X linked. So your answer is A. Your answer is A. A married couple came to the genetic counseling. The husband suffers from insulin-dependent diabetes. That's type 1. The wife is healthy. What is the probability that this couple will have an insulin-dependent child? Insulin-dependent 
dependent child. First of all, you must know that diabetes can be transferred. So one way or the other, it is what a hereditary what disease. But of course, not all children will have this uh, sort of what hereditary. Hereditary. I don't know why. However, like I said, this is what type one, and it can take place in childhood. It can take place in adolescent, and it can even take place in the adulthood. Even though it is type one, it can take place in the adulthood. Would. Therefore, it stands to reason that the probability that this couple will have an insulin-dependent child is higher than throughout the population. When I say it is higher, what I'm trying to refer to is that even if the child is not having the diabetes as he or she is born, he could have it in uh, his or her adolescent age, or he or she could have it in old age or in the adult what, age. So that means the probability is what? It's quite high. It's quite what? High. And so therefore, we can say it is higher than throughout the population. So this can be what? Can be A. Can be A. Can be A. All right. A patient who had been working hard under conditions of elevated temperature has now changed quantity of blood plasma proteins. What phenomenon is this case? Again, by virtue of this patient working under heat, if you come to Africa, most people work under heat. And they are saying that this patient has now changed the quantity of blood plasma proteins. That means the proteins have what? Increased. So what phenomenon is it called? So first of all, you must know that the liver is the primary site for protein synthesis. The liver is the primary site for protein synthesis. And so therefore, when there is a problem with the liver, it can cause either too much protein or too low protein. So we can have hypoproteinemia or hyperproteinemia. Again, the liver is the primary site for the production of proteins. And I'm saying when there's a problem with the liver, it can either lead to what hypoproteinemia or hyper or hyperproteinemia. Now we have different classifications. When we said something is absolute, absolute, this deals with the primary cause of uh, of the problem being the liver. I repeat, when there's a problem directly by the liver, we have what we call what? Absolute hypoproteinemia or absolute hyperproteinemia. For example, when there's a, a, a liver infection, this is a direct uh, cause for what, what we call what? Absolute. Because the origin for the development of that either hypo or, uh, or hyperproteinemia it's as a result of what? Direct injury to the liver. Direct injury to the liver. However, when we have an indirect injury to the liver, when we say indirect injury, the cause is not really about the liver, but it's about what? Other places causing the liver to do that. Example, when we have renal disease, like we have in the case of um, a nephrotic syndrome, you see, in nephrotic syndrome, too much proteins go out. But then, if you check the blood, there's what? Hypoproteinemia or hypoalbuminemia. What it means is that the problem of hypoalbumin or hypoprotein is not because of the liver, but it is because of the kidney. Great. And that phenomenon, we call it what? Relative hypo or hyperproteinemia, relative. We call it relative, relative. Now, if you look at a patient that has been talked over here, there is no problem with the liver itself. However, due to the harsh condition, harsh condition, the quantity of what protein has what? 
has increased. So over here, we can be thinking of what? A relative, relative, relative what? Hyperproteinemia. Relative, relative, relative. So your answer is D. All right. Again, I like a question on accident-based balance because you people should be good at it. Look, an infant has pyrospasm. That means the pyloric part of the stomach is undergoing what? Spasm. Spasm. There's weakness, hypodynamia, convulsion as a result of frequent vomiting. Guys, frequent vomiting will give you what? In vomiting, what do you feel in your tank? Bitterness. That bitterness could be what? Acid. So that means you are vomiting a lot of what? Acid. So what will happen to the body itself? That means alkalosis will ensue. Alkalosis will ensue. And this is what? Excretory or non-gaseous. The last question that we saw, we saw non-gaseous. So either non-gaseous or excretory or excretory alkalosis. Alkalosis. If it is excretory acidosis, what will you see? You will see what? Diarrhea. 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 Great. So this is D. We have an experimental rat with extremity paralysis. So when we say extremity paralysis, uh, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? The peripheral what, areas. Has no tendon and gaseous reflexes. The muscle tone is decreased, but the muscles of the affected extremity maintain their ability to react with excitation to the direct action of continuous current. What type of paralysis is it? First of all, when we say paralysis, we are referring to what? A loss in what? Motor function or inability of the muscles to what? To contract or to perform its function. And it can either be central or peripheral. It can be central or peripheral. When we say central, we are referring to what? A central motor neuron lesion. Central motor neuron lesion. And when we talk about periphery or peripheral, we are talking about what? About the peripheral motor neuron what? lesion. And usually in peripheral, it leads to what? Atonic flaccid paralysis. Atonic flaccid paralysis. Paralysis. Now, in the central, it leads to what? Increase in muscle tone. Increase in muscle tone. Proprioceptive reflexes are increased. But there's absence of what? Atrophy. Absence of atrophy. Atrophy is like wearing away of the what? The muscles or tissues. Wearing away of the tissues. So it becomes what? Atrophied. In central, there's absence of that. In uh, peripheral, there can be what? Atrophy of muscles. And there's no reflexes present. So over here, we are looking for what? For a uh, peripheral, which is also known as what? Flaccid. Flaccid uh, peripheral. Flaccid. I've already explained to you, it leads to what? Atonic flaccid paralysis. Now, in spastic, you can see it in what? In the central. Spastic. That's why I said it is what? It increases in what? Muzzle tone. Muzzle tone means what? Spastic. Muzzle tone means what? Spastic as well. All right. So your answer is D. Great. Please do well to find time and go over the video as a revision for you. It's going to help you tremendously. Now we have a 28-year-old man with a gunshot wound of the shin that resulted in an ulcer from the side of the injury. What is the main factor of neurodystrophy? Neuro dystrophy. Don't forget that every part of your body contains what uh, has uh, nerve fibers. Nerve fibers. So for us to have neurodystrophy, definitely the gunshot or the bullet might have damaged what? Uh, a nerve. It might have damaged what? A nerve. And that pathogenesis or that uh, procedure or that uh, phenomenon, we call it what? Traumatization of the peripheral what? Nerve. Traumatization of the peripheral nerve because there's what neurodystrophy neurons 
de uh, degeneration or destruction. Neurons. So we're talking about what? Nerve fibers. Nerve fibers. So here, you'll be looking out for what? For traumatization of peripheral nerve. All right. Great. 45-year-old patient was admitted to the cardiological department. ECG shows a negative P wave overlapping with the KRS complex. There is a diastolic interval is prolonged, prolonged after extrasystole. First of all, you must know that in diastole, what comes to play is what? The AV node. The AV node or the atrial ventricular node, atrial ventricular node, atrial ventricular node. So when there is a problem with the node, it can lead to delay of impulses to the ventricles. It can lead to what? Delay, also known as what? Prolonged diastolic interval. Prolonged diastolic interval. That's what the, the PQ interval. PQ interval is delayed. Is delayed. And that means that there is a problem with what? With the atrial ventricular node, atrial ventricular node, and again in AV or nodal extrasystole, P waves become negative, and even sometimes they are absent. Sometimes they are absent. They are absent, and if and if the uh, the atria and the ventricles are excited synchronously, the P wave is superimposed. In other words, the P wave overlaps with the QRS complex. That is when the atrium and the ventricle are excited simultaneously or synchronously, synchronously. But either the P wave should excite itself, then it gives way for the QRS or the ventricles to also get what excited. But when they all begin to excite synchronously, we can be having what an overlap, an overlap of waves, overlap of waves. So over here, we are talking about AV, uh, extra systole, extra systole. Now, extra systole is an irregular heartbeat or uh, a premature heartbeat. Premature heartbeat. So, I talk about A. I love this question too because we explain it over here the difference between neuroparalytic and the neurotonic, neurotonic arterial hyperemia. We explain it, so I won't go deep into it into this question. So let's look at the question and then let's identify our answer. A rabbit's nerve that innervated the right ear was cut. When I say it was cut, it means sympathetic nervous system has been affected. So it has been deliberately what? Been caught. It's a deliberate. So we are having a problem with what? Neuroparalytic. Neuroparalytic. And we said in neurotonic, we are dealing with what? Parasympathetic. Parasympathetic. So over here, let's continue. We're having what? Nerve fiber that was cut. So again, because we cut it, we are dealing with sympathetic nervous system. And then its right superior cervical ganglion was removed. Immediately after the operation, the temperature of the ear was measured. All of those things goes on to explain that we're having what? An arterial neuroparalytic hyperemia. So your answer is A. Again, if you've not watched it, do well to watch the previous videos. Two hours after an exam, a student had blood count done, and it was revealed that he had leukocytosis without any significant leukogram modification. Okay, so that means there's no shift of right or left. Now, what is the most probable mechanism of leukocytosis? Don't forget this patient had lost blood. Sorry, is that two hours after an exam, a student had a blood count done. Okay, 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 that's a different thing. All right, so what could happen in this case that there's leukocytosis, however, there's no significant leukogram modification. There's no significant leukogram modification. So first of all, this patient could have developed what we call shock. He could have developed what we call what? Shock, and hence, there is microcirculation what disorder. There is microcirculation disorder. And again, in shock or in microcirculatory disorders, in shock, we have two things. We can be thinking about erectile stage 
and redistribution of blood. Redistribution of blood to other what, organs. For example, when there is a severe blood loss, for instance, your blood begins to, what, to move to compensate for where it is needed the most. Places like the, the kidney, the liver, the intestine, and what, and others. Blood will begin to, what, to be redistributed or to be reduced in some of these what, organs and go to the most important part of the body to compensate for loss of, what, of blood. So in that case, we could have what, leukocytosis. Leukocytosis. So we have what, redistribution of leukocytes in the organism. Now, in case of infection, there can be a left shift or a right shift or left shift or regenerative left shift and all of those things. All of those things. And we can even have uh, leukopiosis intensification when there's an injury or when there's what, uh, how do you call it, infection and all of those things. But over here, we are thinking about redistribution. Redistribution because we have no significant what leukogram modification leukogram modification so your answer is what is b patient presents with ectoriousness that is what jaundice there is clara that or yellow uh, yellow discoloration there is clara in the mucous membrane blood plasma has total blood to be what increased okay uh Stercobilin is increased in feces. Urobilin is increased in urine. What type of jaundice is it? What type of jaundice is it? What type of jaundice is it? And over here, we are looking for what? For hemolytic. We are looking for what? Hemolytic type of what? Jaundice. Hemolytic type of jaundice. So here, your answer is what? Is A. Is A. Is A. So again, in hemolytic uh, anemia, or yeah, usually said anemia, that means there's a breakdown of the, what, the red blood cells either in the vessels or somewhere else in the body or in the spleen. In the spleen. And when the, this, there's a destruction of the RBCs, there will be an increased level of what? Indirect or unconjugated what? Bilirubin. Unconjugated what? Berobin, unconjugated, unconjugated, unconjugated. So all of the year, we are having them over here. Steno, uh, cobalin, and all those things. So please, we have an increase in unconjugated, unconjugated, unconjugated. So I think of A. A. Hepatitis has led to the development of hepatic failure. Okay, that means inflammation of the liver has led to it failure. Mechanism of edematous formation. So here we are having what? An absolute, absolute protein, either hypoproteinemia or hyperproteinemia, isn't it? We have an absolute, but over here, since there's edema, then we're having what? Hypoproteinemia. But this is what? Direct injury to the kidney, sorry, to the liver. So we have an absolute, absolute. So of course, you can, to talk about edema, we are dealing with what? Proteins. So we are talking about protein synthesis is what is affected. Protein synthesis are affected. So here, you are thinking of A, of A, of A. Uh, as a result of a trauma, good, there's a trauma here. A patient has developed a traumatic shock. Shock. You remember I was talking about what? Uh, some redistribution or some erector, something, right? There's a traumatic shock that led to the following disorder. AP is 140, 90. Pulse is 120. Patient, patient is fuzzy, talkative, and pale. Such state relates to the following shock phases. Shock phases. Now, for any shock, we have two phases. For any shock, we have what? Two phases. We can talk about uh, the erectile stage. We can talk about the erectile stage. And then later on, we can talk about what? The torpid stage. Let's kindly mute our microphone. If your microphone is on, kindly mute it. Great, great. Again, we can be thinking about what? Uh, either erectile stage, which is usually at the beginning, 
or initially. That's what happens. And then we have what the torpid stage. Again, we'll talk about the erector stage. Erector stage. Uh, we are referring to what excitation of the neurons. Excitation of the neurons. Of the neurons. And we'll talk about the tepid stage. It is when we have what an oppression of their activity. Oppression. So after exciting, they undergo what oppression. Oppression or inhibition, or they are inhibited. So look at it. The patient is now fuzzy, talkative, and pale. What it means is that the patient is having what what we call excitation. He is being what excited, excited. So we call it what erectile, 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 becoming what excited. If the patient is depressed and all those things, we could be thinking of what top it, top it, top it, top it. All right. So here we are looking at for what for erectile face of shock erectile face of shock erectile all right good aha let's look at this one examination of a patient to the surgical department symptoms of acute appendicitis were revealed look so that means there's what inflammation and i said anytime there's inflammation Sometimes you might see what this left shift and all those kind of shifts, right? So look at it. Total leukocyte count is 16. Already leukocytosis is, is present. Leukocytosis is present. Bethophilus 0, eosinophils 2, juvenile forms 2, subnuclear 8, uh, segmentonuclear 59, lymphocytes 25. For what? changes are we looking for in this question obviously you know that the neutrophils 59 is definitely what increase is definitely what increase now let me explain the phenomenon between this uh left shift and then regenerative left shift when we say left shift left shift uh, left shift we also call it blood shift this is when there is an increase in the number of immature leukocytes. So when you talk about left shift, we have what? Immature leukocyte in the peripheral blood. In the peripheral blood. Immature. And usually we're talking about what? The band neutrophils or the segmented neutrophils. So that's what left shift. That means the opposite would be true for right shift. The opposite would be true for right shift, whether there will be an increase of what matured leukocyte, matured leukocyte. And again, when we say we have regenerative left shift, regenerative, it is usually used in the context of neutrophilia with a left shift, with a left shift. But when mature neutrophils outnumber, outnumber the immature neutrophils, we are dealing with what? Regenerative. Again, in regenerative, we are looking at for what? Mature neutrophils outnumbering immature neutrophils. Immature neutrophils. Regardless, there is still an increase of what? Of blood in the peripheral uh, blood or in the peripheral system. Great. So that is what? Uh, regenerative left shift. Now, in degenerative, degenerative, degenerative. This is when the absolute number of the band or immature neutrophils are greater than the mature or the segmented neutrophils. Again, this is when the immature are more than the mature. That's what degenerative. That means no new cells are coming up. But in regenerative, mature cells are increasing. So over here, what are we looking for? When you look at it, this is a stop nuclear or stop uh, neutrophil. This is eight. Look at the segmented one, 59. This means that segmented is more than the stop. So the stop is like a pre precursor or an immature form of segmented neutrophils. So over here, we could be thinking of what? Of neutrophilia with regenerative left shift. Re Generative left shift. So here you are thinking of D. You are thinking of D. Again, if you are lost, do well to watch the video all over again or 
at the end of the lesson, please let me know. Aha, another way to do this thing. Look at it. After a patient was treated with viral hepatitis, treated type B, got symptoms of hepatic insufficiency. Did them say problem with the liver? Hepatic insufficiency or liver failure. What blood changes indicative of protein metabolism disorder will be observed in this case? Again, I made mention of what to call what absolute and relative. In absolute, the disease is coming right from the liver. In relative, it is a result of another disease other than the liver. So obviously, you are thinking about an absolute, absolute, absolute. Now, absolute what? Now, if the liver is not performing well, what will happen? There can be what? Uh, low what? Albumin levels. Like a few questions that we saw about three or four slides ago. We solved some question on that. Though they didn't ask us whether it is absolute or it is relative. But over here, we are looking for what? Absolute hypoalbuminemia. Absolute hypoalbuminemia. So your answer is D. Is D. We have a patient who was stunk by a bee. Stunk by a bee. That means there can be what? Alleg In fact, not there can. This is what allergic reaction. Definitely is what allergic reaction. And in allergic reaction, we are talking about type 1. Type 1. This is what type 1. Type 1. And what it does is that there is a release of what? Some mast cell. And this mast cell will degranulate and release what we call what? Histamine. Histamine. And this histamine will lead to bronchoconstriction and then vasodilation. Bronchoconstriction and then vasodilation. Check note. Now let's look at it. Examination revealed that the left hand was hot, hot, pink, edema, and edematic. There was a big red blister on the side of stink. What is the mechanism of what? Edema formation. Again, in edema formation, you are looking at for what? Oncotic pressure. You are looking at for what? Uh, micro circulatory circulatory disorder or you are looking for what hydrostatic what pressure hydrostatic pressure deals with what the heart where there's volume which has to do with the volume of blood oncotic pressure has to do with what with proteins whilst uh uh, uh micro security system has to do with what the permeability the permeability and i just said when histamine is released it causes vasodilation that means there's increased of vessel permeability increased in vessel permeability so over here we are thinking of what e we are thinking of e i'm not going to to go deeper because i've already explained the mechanisms but i'm just revising so that you guys can remember it's better and apply it so always apply always apply if it is protein then you're thinking of what oncotic pressure if it is the heart which is insufficient then you're thinking of what of hydrostatic. Great, great. But this one, inflammation is there, edematic. So you're thinking of what? Microsecretory permeability. A patient is suffering from pheochromocytoma, complaints of test, dry mouth, hunger. That's diabetes. So. Uh, blood sugar level, you see, there's hyperglycemia. Uh, what type of hyperglycemia is it? First of all, you, wanna, you know that this is a tumor in the adrenal what, gland. To be specific, in the what? In the medulla. So tumor of the medulla. Medulla of the adrenal gland. Medulla of the adrenal gland. So here, you are thinking of what? Adrenal tumor or pheochromocytoma. So it's A. It's A. All right. Great. A patient is suffering from stenocardia. That is what angina or heart attack. Not heart attack per se, but angina. Heart attack is different from angina. Angina is what heart pain. Heart attack is myocardial infarction. Please. Let me not confuse you guys. So, and it was given what nitroglycerin, which we've done it in pharmacology. Why is nitroglycerin? You know, stenocardia. In acute uh, heart failure, what are you thinking about? You are thinking of uh, uh, coglycone. 
in chronic, you are thinking of what? The uh, coxin or the toxin. Great. They say it causes what? Restoration of blood supply of the myocardium and relieve the pain. What intracellular mechanism provides the restoration of energy supply? Restoration of energy. When we talk about energy, what comes to mind? You are thinking of what? ATP. You are definitely thinking of what? ATP. ATP. So, what are the mechanism involved in restoration of what? Energy or ATP. Of course, one there's what? Intensification of ATP resynthesis. Intensification of ATP resynthesis. Don't forget, stenocardia is not necessarily as a result of what? Uh, low blood supply to the heart. If there's that, then you're thinking of what? Myocardiac infarction. Okay? You are thinking of what? Myocardiac infarction. But this is different. This is thinking of what? Intensification of what? ATP resynthesis. So your answer is B. Is B. A couple had a child with Down syndrome. Down syndrome. So that's what tries to me what? 21. Let's write this down before I forget. So Down, down syndrome has uh, trisomy 21. Patao syndrome. That's trisomy 13. Edward syndrome. Trisomy 18. I repeat. Down syndrome. Trisomy 21. Patao. P-A-T-A-U. Trisomy 13. Edward's. Trisomy, trisomy 18 is Edward syndrome. 13 is Patao. Good. Then Kleinefeta. 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 K L I N E F E L T E. That is X X Y. X X Y. That's Kleinefeta. Now in Tena, it is X O. Tena is XO. Tena is XO. And how do I remember Tena? Because Tena means, in a way, they've turned me down or they, they didn't turn up. They didn't turn up. So the X chromosome didn't turn up or the Y chromosome didn't turn up. So it's what is XO. Great. Canifeta is what XXY. So it's a male, right? But it's a female, but with no additional X. With no additional X. That was just by the way. And of course, how do we determine that this is it? This is this is it. We are looking at what? At the gamut. We are looking at what? At the gamut. The gamut. The gamut. Or the genotype. The genotype. The genotype. And uh, what phenomenon do we use to do that? It's called what? Uh, karyotype or karyotyping. K A R O T T Y P I N G. Kyo typing. That's a phenomenon for checking. But the gamut, that is what the X or Y, they are what the gamut. They are what the gamut. So talking about so there's a problem with what with gametopathy. So there's a problem with what with the gamut. Problem with the gamut. Problem with the gamut. So here you're talking about what of B. Gametopathy. 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 So your answer is B. All right. There are several groups of molecular mechanisms playing part, important part, in the pathogenesis of insult to cells, which contributes to pathology development. There's what an insult to cell. When, when I say insult, it means what? Injury. What processes are stimulated by protein, proteinic damage mechanism? Protein damage. Protein damage. So first of all, you must know that protein mechanism is one of the Molecular mechanism of cell injury. Protein mechanism is one of the molecular mechanisms of uh, cell what? Injury. Cell injury. And you know that a lot of enzymes are made up of what? Proteins. A lot of enzymes are made up of what? Of proteins. So when there's an injury to the protein mechanism, what it means is that they could have what? Either a reversible or irreversible inhibition of the enzyme. Reversible or irreversible inhibition of the enzymes, of the 
enzymes. So here we are thinking of what inhibition or enzyme inhibition, enzyme inhibition, enzyme inhibition. There can also be what denaturation, denaturation, where the structure of the proteins are destroyed. The structure of the proteins are destroyed. So it goes to the protocol called what proteolysis, proteolysis. That's a destruction of the uh, proteolytic enzymes, destruction of proteolytic enzymes, proteolytic enzymes. So here we are looking at what enzyme inhibition because proteins are made up of, sorry, most enzymes are made up of what proteins. So their damage can lead to what it's denaturation or destruction. A child with cleft palate revealed that there's what an iota defect and reduced number of T cells. I told you guys that the time will come, I will explain all of these things to you. So, when there is T cells deficiency, we call it the George syndrome. Take note, the George. When there is B cell deficiency, B cell B lymphocyte deficiency, we are having what Brutons. We're having what? Brutons. Brutons. To take note. When we have T cells, the George syndrome, B cells, Brutons. If it is both, we have combined immune what? Suppressive. Combined immune suppressive disease. Combined immune suppressive disease. Combined immune. That is both. If it is T alone, the George. If it is B alone, Bruton. So how do I know this? B for Bruton. As simple as that. Then the other one, obviously what would be the George syndrome or the George disease. So over here, you are looking for what? The George, the George, the George, the George. All right. All right. So I love this. Look at this. Patient is suffering from what? Infectious diseases and revealed that IgG concentration of the blood serum was 10 times less, less than the normal. A and G, IgA and IgM concentration was also what reduced. Analysis shows lack of B lymphocyte. Don't forget, they mature into a uh, blastmocyte. So B lymphocyte, you are thinking of what? B for what? Brutons. B for what? Brutons. B for what? Brutons. So you are talking of what? Of E, Brutons, Brutons, also known as x link agama globulinemia, agama globo, globulinemia, agama globulinemia, and it's x linked. It is x linked. All right. Now, in the George, it is. It has to do with the chromosome number 22. Chromosome number 22. I forgot to mention that. It has to do with the chromosome number 22. There's a deletion of some part of the, that chromosome. A deletion of some part of that chromosome. So you're thinking of what E. You are thinking of what E. I love this because you will get it correct. A driver who got trauma in the road accident and is shock, is in shock has reduced urine output. What is the pathogenesis? What is the pathogenesis of the reduced diuresis? Don't forget trauma. That means this patient could develop what shock of a lot of blood could, what, could go away, right? A lot of blood could go away. So what you can think of is what? Is hydrostatic pressure is what? Reduced. Or there's drop of what? Arterial pressure. Drop of arterial pressure. Or low BP leading to what? To shock. Causing the shock. Or if there's shock, of course, you can't urinate more. You can't urinate more. So your answer is A. Again, we have done this. Your clue here is what? Moonlike face. So in moonlike face, you are thinking of what? Cushion. You are thinking of what? Cushing. Cushing. But don't forget, the difference between Cushing disease and Cushing syndrome. So now let's look at the question. Examination of a 42-year-old patient revealed tumor. 
So there's two more of the adeno hypophysis, that's the pituitary gland. There is what a tumor of the pituitary gland. Patients with is this, blah, 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 blah. So as a result, there's AP, 210 and 140. So let's differentiate between a syndrome and then what? A disease. Obviously, we know that this is a cushion problem. And cushion simply means what? There's increased amount of what? Cortisol. So cushion disease, cushion disease is normally caused by a pituitary gland tumor. Pituitary gland tumor. Pituitary gland tumor. So it will secrete a lot of what? ACTH. ACTH. Which will in turn will stimulate the adrenal gland to produce more cortisol level or to produce more cortisol. Cortisol hormones to produce more cortisol because the tumor controls all those production. If the tumor, if the pituitary gland says don't produce, they won't produce. If the pituitary gland says produce, they will produce. And in tumor, obviously, they will produce more. And that is what Cushing disease. In Cushing syndrome, it refers to the signs and symptoms associated with excess cortisol in the body. Excess cortisol in the body, regardless of the cause. Regardless of the cause. So here we are looking at for what? For Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome. So the answer is D. Again, hereditary questions should always be easy for you. Examination of a 12-year-old boy with developmental lack with uh, achondroplasia. There is disproportional constitution with evident shortening of the upper and in the lower limbs as a result of growth disorder. Growth disorder of the tuber bones. Now, this disease is... This disease is... First of all, you must understand what uh, achondroplasia is. Now, achondroplasia is a genetic disorder that results in dwarfism. Dwarfism. Now, so let's do it. The shortening of upper and in the lower limbs. Upper and the lower limbs as a result of growth disorder. So there's what? Dwarfism. 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 And it is inherited from one's parent in an autosomal dominant manner. Autosomal dominant manner. So that means that it is hereditary and it is what? A dominant gene. A dominant gene. So here we are thinking of what? Of A as our likely answer. Dominant, autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant means what? A inherited and what? It is dominant. This one has nothing to do with, with the sex link. Because is that coming from father or mother or parents? It's not. Nothing like that. But we're talking about what? We're talking about the autosomes. Autosome. And we have 22 autosomal chromosomes. Let me not confuse you guys. Please. An autosome. It's okay. All right. So your answer is A. Uh, 